Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titana Games, and today we're going to be continuing the survival series, and we'll be adding uh, stamina now to our jump mechanics. So we'll be incorporating that a little bit, and also setting up for uh, some future stamina incorporation for other actions as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is open up this blueprints folder, and right click and create a new folder that we will call lists. So we'll open this, and basically in this folder is where we're going to store all of the enumerations for our project. Uh, so let's go ahead and create our first one. We'll right click, go to blueprints, enumeration, and we'll call this E stamina consumption actions. Okay, stamina consumption actions. Now we'll open this up, and we're just going to add two for now. Okay, so this first one here we'll call jump. This next one we'll call use tool. And the reason we have these two, uh, or yeah, I'll just briefly explain what these are. So jump is going to be for when we want to consume uh, or perform the jump action, right? That'll help us in determining how much stamina to consume, etc. Uh, then the use tool one will be for um, you know the same same purpose, but instead of having a predefined value, we'll have values defined in our you know tool uh, blueprints themselves. So that'll come later, but uh, you know, like I said, we're setting up for the future. So we'll close that, go back out to blueprints, and we're going to create another folder called structs this time. So this will be where we keep all of our structures. So we'll right click, go to blueprints, structure, we'll call this F stamina consumption values. Okay, open this up, add a new variable. So we should have two. We'll change them both to floats. This first one here we'll call it jump. And the second one we'll call use underscore tool because use underscore because you can't have spaces for whatever reason in structs. So we'll give them some default consumption values here of 10 and 15, and we'll just go with that for now. But as I mentioned uh, just briefly ago, um, this use tool will be setting this value based on uh, other blueprints of tools that we'll be able to pick up and craft, you know, and equip. So, but that'll come later. Okay, so we'll go back to core, open up our survival character. And now in here, before we do anything, let's go ahead and add a new variable. And we'll call this uh, stamina consumption values. Okay, and we'll change this to type F stamina consumption values. Okay, compile and save. And now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take our jump functionality and we're gonna move it down here because we're gonna have to do a lot of different stuff. So we're going to delete everything here, okay? And we're going to move, you know, create some space. And now, since we're going to be working with stamina now and using stamina to drive our jump, what we need to do is do a check to see if we can jump, you know, if we have enough stamina to do so. So how we'll do that is drag out, do a branch, okay? And then we need to create a function for this. So we'll create a function and we'll call this can underscore jump. Now the reason I'm using underscore is because there's already a function uh, called can jump. Um, you can override it, right? So here it is. You can override it and implement, you know, and add a call to its parent function so it still works the same. Uh, but we aren't going to be doing that because I tried it and there's some weird stuff that happens. So I don't know why, but it just doesn't like to work. Um, with stamina. So anyways, like it works for a little while, but then when you get to like the last jump and you technically should be able to jump, it still won't jump. It's weird. So anyways, we'll just call it can underscore jump for now. Okay, and we're going to add an output value here that we will call return value. Okay. Now for the actual value here, we need to do, we need to check two things. So we're going to do an and Okay. Now the first thing we're going to check is, um, well, actually the first thing is we need to create another variable here. So we'll call this can jump question mark. Change this to a boolean. Compile and save, and we'll make it uh, true by default. So we'll take this, plug it in. Okay. But now for the second thing, what we need to do is create a new function. Uh, so we'll create another one, and we'll call this has stamina for action. Okay, 
Now this function is going to uh, also have a boolean return value. So we'll call it return value. Drag it out. Okay, but this time it's also going to have an input. Now this input we're going to call it action. And we're going to change its type to E stamina consumption actions. Now with this enum we can drag out and do a switch on the actions. Hook this up. And now based on each one we can use the values from our stamina consumption uh, values to determine if we have you know enough have enough stamina for the action. Okay, so we're gonna actually duplicate the return value here. So control W to duplicate. Hook that up, hook that up. And now we'll take our stamina consumption values, say get, we'll right click, split it. Alright. And now from here we'll take this first one and check if it's greater than or equal to. Um, but actually we want to move this down, so hold control and drag it. Hook this up. And the value we want to check if, if it's greater than or equal to is our current stamina. So we'll right click, say current stamina. Okay, so we'll check if our current stamina is greater than or equal to that value. Then we'll do the same thing here. So current stamina greater than or equal to the use tool value. Hook that up. And there we go. We have our new function created. Okay, perfect. So compile and save that. And what we're going to do actually before we leave this function is we're going to make it pure and const. Okay. So we'll go back here now. We'll add that function. Hook it up. And we're going to leave its action here to jump. Okay. Because we're doing a jump. So tidy up a little bit. Okay. So now for this function, we'll also make it pure and const as well. So compile save, we can close that. Now we can go out, add our can jump, hook it up, and there we go. So now we can determine whether or not we can jump. So the next thing we're gonna do now is, well, we're gonna create another function. We're gonna call this consume uh, stamina by action, okay? This will have an input of type E stamina, uh, consumption actions. We'll call it action once again. Okay, and we're not going to have any outputs this time. So we'll take our action, we're going to do a switch. Okay, and we'll take our stamina consumption values, get it, right click, split it. Okay, but now we need to do another thing. So that other thing is create another function. This one will uh, be called consume stamina instead. So this will be more of a generic uh, consume stamina function. So we'll add an input here of type float that we will call amount. Okay. And what this function is going to do is, well, it's really going to do the same thing pretty much as our decrease stamina uh, does. So we can actually take all this right here, copy it. Okay. Go to consume stamina, paste it. Cool. Hook this up. Awesome. Now we will delete this decrease stamina amount and instead plug in amount here. So it should be current stamina minus amount clamp less than or equal to zero and then set these values. Okay. So compile and save that. Close it. Now we can come back here to jump. We'll do consume stamina. Duplicate that. Hook it up. Plug the jump value in for jump and plug the use tool value in for use tool. All right, so there we have it. We now have that function ready for us. So what we can do is off of after jump, we'll say consume stamina by action. Okay, make sure to use that one. And the action will, will of course be jump. Okay, now next what we need to do is we need to set can jump to false because now we're assuming you know we're in the air Okay, so we shouldn't be able to, or we're not going to be able to jump anymore, basically. Um, and this will play a role um, when we, well, in a second, you'll see. Okay, so next what we want to do is we want to clear any increase timers. Okay, so we're going to clear any of the timers that we have going, uh, and then we're also going to clear any of the decrease timers. So we're just basically going to make sure that none of our stamina timers are running. Okay. 
Then we're also going to set our speed to jog. Okay. And that's really everything we have to do for the jump. Okay, so now here's the more important part that comes in. And that is we need to right click and say event on landed. Uh, there we go. So this function gets called uh, whenever your character lands on the ground. You know, so when his state changes from falling to walking. Okay. And so with this function, what we need to do is um, drag out and we're going to immediately say set can jump back to true. Okay, then after that, we're going to do a branch. And we're going to check if our current stamina is, let's see, what do we want to check? Is greater than or equal to uh, our max stamina. Because if it is, um, um, excuse me, if it, if it is, then we know that we don't want to, uh, you know, start increasing stamina anymore. Okay, so in this case, we're going to be focused on the false. Okay, so we'll plug this in, and we're, you know, we're looking for the false case here. So if if current stamina is not greater than or equal to max stamina, meaning we we have our max stamina, right? Meaning so false means we are missing stamina then we're going to use a retriggerable delay and we'll give it a value of maybe like 0.5 okay and this will be the delay uh, from the point that we landed to the point that we you know start a timer again so it'll give us like a, a brief almost like the out of breath effect uh, from the sprint so yeah we'll do a branch now here uh, because we need to check some new stuff and that stuff uh, is let's take condition we're going to do an and okay then we're going to get our character movement. We're going to say is falling. And then we want to do not. So are we not falling? Okay. And then also um, we need out of breath. And are we not out of breath? Okay. So if this is true, then we're going to do a branch, and we're going to check if is sprinting is true. Because if is sprinting is true, then that means that we want to handle, um, or excuse me, that means that we want to uh, kind of restart the timers that would be called um, up here if you were to start sprinting. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll say set speed to sprint okay then we'll say set stamina decrease oops set decrease where is oh I'm excusing I'm typing the wrong stuff start decrease stamina timer okay and then off of false we'll say set stamina yeah, I keep doing the wrong thing start stamina increase stamina timer <laughs> Start increase stamina timer. Man, it's I'm losing my words here. Okay, so once we have that set up, we should actually be good to go now. Okay, so if we want to go ahead and try this out now, we can. It should work. So if you press play, there's our stamina bar. If we jump, okay, it decreased, and then after 0.5 seconds of landing, it increases again. Okay, so now um, if I'm sprinting, Right, we can still sprint, it still decreases correctly. Okay, we'll wait for that to go back up. Now, if I continually jump, right, it will keep decreasing without re-triggering the or without um, that delay firing. That's that's where the re-triggerable delay comes in. Because every time you land, it will re-trigger the delay. Oops, had a bit of a frame rate slow down there. Okay, so we have that working for us. Now, um, thanks to the way that we have everything else set up. Right, and all the limitations that we put inside the sprinting function. Um, when we're moving, right, so we could be sprinting and we jump. Okay, and then when we land, it will allow us to sprint again. Okay, after the short delay. Um, let's see what else. If we jump, we can't uh, manipulate the sprint bar to you know to kind of work around the uh, the stamina regen because that was an issue that. Um, was occurring that uh, this system now accommodates for. Uh, so really it's 
I, at least I think it's the foolproof way of doing it. But if you guys encounter any bugs, please let me know and you know we'll work it out. But basically, there's our jump system now with the stamina included and it works with our sprinting mechanic because um, really that's that's the hardest part there, making sure that the timers all cooperate well together um, so that we're not increasing stamina at the wrong time or decreasing stamina at the wrong time. So uh, anyways, there you have it. Um, that's pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and just comment this out, calling this jump mechanic, uh, I guess with, with stamina. All right, that's fine. Okay, and we can put can jump under actions probably. Okay, stamina consumption values. Uh, that could probably go under stamina. So we'll move that under there. Perfect. Okay, and then these last functions here like can jump and all that stuff. Um, we can put those under actions maybe. So. Um, Actually, would that be related to movement? Yeah, that would be more related to movement. So we'll put can jump under movement. Has stamina for action. I guess that's technically a stamina one. So we'll put that in stamina. You know, really, you guys can put these wherever you want. I just highly recommend organizing them in a manner that you will remember, you know, that will help you in the end. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you like it, like or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.